Welcome to tonight's lecture as part of the Marble Hill Autumn Lecture Series. We are delighted to welcome Rebecca Bennett uh, to talk about conservation in English heritage and particularly the conservation of Marble Hill and as it undergoes its revival. And Marble Hill is being revived um, and as part of that there's a whole host of exciting things that uh, we'll be seeing um, with the cafe being open um, in next spring um, and also kind of better sports provisions for our community um, and the landscape being invested in and that's um, hugely exciting um, particularly with um, Kate our head gardener who is spearheading that and her role will be there for far beyond um, the, the revived uh, project itself. So um, the landscape of Marble Hill will always be on the mouths of um, English heritage. Um, we've also got a whole raft of apprenticeships and job opportunities for the community um, and very very excitingly that house will be open for five days a week for free and that's why we're, we're here today is to celebrate that and to share in that um, exciting story of how it's getting to that point um, and that's been done by um, a, a fabulous team of conservation um, specialists and uh, one of those amazing specialists is uh, Rebecca. Um, she first took, uh, she first worked for English Heritage in 2013 um, as a, a conservator for a heating project in Eltham Palace um, and she's risen the ranks and is, is her current role is collections conservator for London, for the whole of London in, and she started at um, in 2016. Um, she trained as a conservative for museums and for archaeology and she's worked on amazing sites in um, all around the world from Tanzania to Turkey so um, please feel free to ask her any questions about those experiences um, at the end of the talk. She's now responsible for the conservation um, of the collection for a variety of interiors in London uh, from Kenwood to um, to kind of the collection with Charles in Charles Darwin's um, uh, house Down House, which is an um, English heritage property, we are so delighted that she's here to be able to share about what's happening at Marble Hill, and um, and I'd like to just open the floor to say a very very big welcome, and we look forward to hearing about what you're going to say. Rebecca. Well, uh, thank you very much for that introduction, Rachel, and thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, so as Rachel said, tonight I'm going to talk about conservation for the project Marble Hill Revived, um, and it focuses on Marble Hill House and its landscape, um, a place that many of you will be familiar with. It was built from 1724 to 1729 for Henrietta Howard, um, the mistress of George II, as she's very well known for, um, and the later Countess of Suffolk. Um, and in the talk, we'll touch on uh, collections conservation at English Heritage. We'll talk about the project specifically and, and what, what it aims to do. Um, and then I'll describe a little bit about uh, how um, the conservation team input into the planning phase of the project, then how we managed um, the decant of the collection as a whole to enable the construction works. Um, I'll then talk a little bit more about the phase that we're in at the moment, which is uh, captured by the image on the screen, um, I hope, which is very much a, a phase of work in progress. Um, that is the uh, south elevation, uh, completely scaffolded as it looked uh, last week. Uh, it's changed already because some more hoarding has gone up, um, so it's a constantly changing work in progress. Um, I'll then chat about how we look after the collection when it's in store, um, in commercial storage off-site as it is at the moment, and then we can talk a little bit about the reinstallation and uh, plans for reopening. Um, so first of all I wondered if it would be helpful to give a definition of, of, of what conservation is. I'm sure many of you know, and it is difficult to define, um, but I like this definition, um, which is that conservation is a process that aims to retain, reveal, and enhance what people value about the material past, and then to sustain those values for future generations. Um, 
another description which is very nice is is, is um, uh, of conservation as the responsible management of change or of deterioration uh, which affects all things and all people unfortunately um, so it's a very nice catch-all um, as, as this describes so much of what English Heritage as a whole organisation does actually so not only my uh, own uh, work and, and the work of my team uh, my immediate team in conservation and the broader curatorial team but also what um, uh, other, other colleagues do. So for example, our estates team, our properties curators who look after the physical fabric of the building, our building conservation managers, surveyors, building services managers. So all of those professionals in English heritage which are involved in the conservation process. Um, but then maybe thinking specifically about the kind of curatorial conception of conservation. <clears throat> At English Heritage, our approach is often spoken about in terms of collections, care. So we're looking after the collection as a whole, not, not an individual object. Um, and, and that really is a range of activities which are designed to prevent damage to artefacts and, and interiors, um, which includes things like conservation housekeeping, um, emergency salvage planning, uh, and the training around those sorts of things as well. Um, and then protection during functions, uh, filming, photography and building works as we're about to discuss. Um, also things like safe handling and transport and then good storage and showcase environments, um, packing and protection methods and, and condition surveys. So we know what is going on with our collection as well. Um, and all of these things are also sometimes known as preventive conservation. Um, so the aim is to prevent uh, deterioration at too rapid a rate um, and so like everything really we try to strike a balance um, between wanting to display objects so that they are as accessible as possible to all our visitors um, but also we want to control the risk of damage within that display context um, so as far as possible they can be looked at for generations to come not just not just our own um, very very briefly then um, a little bit about the project itself many of you will, will, will know about it already so for us one of the very very important endpoints is that we will be open we'll be able to open Marble Hill House for free for five days a week and it will be open free flow so people can come and explore it um, in their own time and really enjoy the collections and the interior so that we you don't have to come on a guided tour you'll be able to just uh, enjoy the property um, on your own and then there's all sorts of works also that relate to the wider landscape um, a program of ecological and uh, heritage small-scale events and activities around that and then big improvements to the sports pitches and facilities associated with those um, a much improved cafe and a new play area for children and the existing provision is also being retained and then lots of um, really important improvements um, to biodiversity and for things like signage and seating and bins um, and then also very importantly uh, lots of new jobs 17 new jobs including two full-time gardeners and seven apprentices and, and all of this really is a package of of six million uh, inward investment into Marble Hill so uh, it's, it's a really big project for us and, and obviously generously funded by the um, by, by the lottery uh, by two streams of lottery funding actually so where do I and my team come in so um, we are responsible for the conservation of the collections and the interiors, as Rachel said earlier, and, and we've been involved in this project for, for a long time, and the project's been a long time in development, as many of you will also be aware. Um, and so we've been involved in defining some aspects of the scope. So, for example, by advising on and facilitating um, uh, certain uh, additional professional surveys. So we, we, for a long time, have been concerned about uh, damp in the house. Um, so we've done some damp monitoring there and, and assisted other professionals to do further damp monitoring. Um, and for a long time also, I've been concerned about how robust the staircase is and how robust it will be when we open the house up, uh, hopefully to, to many more visitors than, than it was ever designed to be open to. And then certainly um, that have experienced it in the last few years. So we want to make sure that you know, that the, the fabric of the house can support that. So um, uh, we were involved in making sure it hopefully will be able to, and I'm sure it will be able to. Um, 
And originally the main proposals for the house were about increasing access. So they focused, I mean, um, I mean, it's, it's all about increasing access, but the main changes to the house were to put in a lift so that the first floor would be accessible. Um, so we, um, our, uh, the wider conservation team, uh, uh, myself being involved in that and other professionals were looking at things like um, what level of vibration would be caused by the lift being installed um, and what potential damage would be caused to, to the objects that could actually be moved um, uh, and the interiors as well the decorative interiors so we knew even at the beginning that we would need to take out some objects the ones that would be very vulnerable to that damage and um, so we're thinking about a partial decant of the collection um, however, as the scope expanded, uh, it became clear that we needed to do more work than we had originally thought. So um, we uh, found out that we needed to replace the full electrical installation in the house in order to put the lift in. And so as the scope expanded, um, obviously, we realised that, um, that the works uh, would cause more of an impact on the collection and the interiors than we had originally thought. So we took a risk based approach. We looked at what the likelihood of damage um, occurring would be if we moved the objects and also if we left them there uh, and the best ways of mitigating damage in both cases. Um, to help us decide these things, we drew on our experience of other projects, for example, the Caring for Kenwood project that we, uh, that we completed a few years ago, um, and then things like an Elton Palace heating project, uh, which involved ripping out the uh, uh, original 1930s heating system, which was, for the most part, under the floorboard. So again, quite an intrusive project in lots of ways. Um, uh, and we came to the conclusion that as there was an uncertainty about the cabling routes at Marble Hill, uh, how, what chases would need to be opened up and exactly what walls. Um, we knew that there would need to be a lot of window repairs with full windows being removed and lots of floorboards would need to be lifted in order to take out the existing electrical installation and put in the new electrical installation. It became evident that actually, even on the most practical level to allow the builders to do their works, we'd have to get the collection out, let alone for any risks to the collection. Um, so we knew that. Um, then the next real quandary was to look at actually how many of the architectural details we would need to remove to, 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 make, to make them safe, really. Um, so we did a full survey of, of these uh, you know, wonderful details in the Great Room, um, many of which we, we believe are the original 18th century carvings um, uh, that will have been regilded, but have probably not been down since they were installed. Um, uh, and what we decided to do, the balance of risk, was that we were going to remove um, the very large paintings, some of which you can see in here, which are essentially kind of built into the room in some ways um, and then also the peer mirrors um, so once those very practical decisions had been made um, we needed to influence how the, the building contractors how the, the construction contractors would also carry out their work so we did that by preparing and issuing a series of specifications for how we would protect the vulnerable areas left in the building. So uh, basically saying what they needed to do to treat the site properly. So uh, things like uh, not using the mahogany staircase uh, unless absolutely necessary, wearing soft boots, ensuring that all surfaces were protected before any tools or kit were placed on them, uh, and things like creating full environmental seals around windows before they were removed to minimise the impact of the fluctuations of the environment um, uh, and also the, input, the, the ingress of dust and dirt. Um, and we forbade any original surfaces to be fixed to in any way. So this was all drawn up in a very, very formalised way. Um, and then it was issued um, in the tender pack to, for, for the main work so that our requirements, our very important requirements, could be priced into the final bids and taken fully into account in the process. And that was really crucial. Um, and then we had to get our own house in order. So we had to um, arrange to be able to remove the collection as a whole safely. Um, to, uh, and to do that, we needed to make sure that all of our own documentation and all of our condition information was uh, bang up to date. Um, and this was a really big team effort. So uh, specialist uh, painting conservation colleagues and support from a fabulous uh, project conservator who was brought in specifically to focus on Marble Hill. Um, and and of course collaboration with uh, other colleagues in the department most notably the properties curator and the collections curator and their team 
So our main focus was working out uh, how many things we had and how big those things were, as well as what condition they were in. Um, so we knew how much money we'd need to pay to uh, get them out and to store them for a while uh, during the works. Um, so this was a quite a big task. Um, we had a lot of discussions to hold with external stakeholders, with, with lenders who include big national collections like the Victoria and Albert Museum, as well as smaller private individuals um, and, and smaller groups and societies. So we needed to make sure that all of the requirements that they quite rightly have for their collections would be met when we put things in, in storage as well. Um, so when I prepared the tender pack for, for the storage and the handling contract to help everything go out, we thought we had 454 objects. Um, on the last day of actually removing everything, it turned out we had 644, uh, but that really wasn't because we lost 200 objects or found 200 objects rather. It was more that the documentation that we traditionally keep within English Heritage, although we look at parts of an object, we don't really look at how we would dismantle a large object, for example. So something like a bed, um, it may have two or two or three uh, pieces recorded in our documentation system, but actually to get it out of a door, uh, you know, quite a small door actually, for quite a big house, you might need to break it down into some more pieces than, than that. Um, so uh, yeah, that's, that was a really interesting <laughs> process. Um, and the condition assessment process, although obviously we know very broadly what, what, what kind of state our collections are in and we know what the main risk factors are, we don't often get the chance to look at every single object in a house and work out what it needs. Um, so that uh, process was excellent and it enabled us to identify that there were, there was some work that needed to be done before objects could be safely moved and packed and then stored. Um, and uh, lo lots of this was around stabilization of decorative surfaces, most notably things like gilding and lacquer. Um, so we worked out exactly what we needed to do to how many pieces. And again, we tendered that work and, and had um, additional specialist contractors help us with that work. Um, so this is some images of the, the sorts of things that happened to, to gilded surfaces over the years. So this is a, a lovely marble top table um, and you can see in the larger blown up image on the right hand side that there is uh, a few cracks and a few raised areas and actually this is a, a post treatment image so all of those have actually been stabilized now so they're all they were all good to go and good to travel um the lacquer and japan objects also needed some work and i i, I love this image um it, it shows the uh, the screen in the great room undergoing conservation um, and it's one of the few pieces at Marble Hill which is actually original to the house and which Henrietta Howard would have owned it has her initials on it um, and uh, like a lot of lacquer work over the ages um, there were cracks in the surface which were clearly open clearly mobile um, and if uh, we hadn't done something we would have lost large areas of the surface um, so this image shows those cracks and loose areas being consolidated which uh, essentially is a is a term which means we we, we place adhesive in to uh, run it under the cracks um, and then this image is a clamping system um, which is a, an amazing uh, i think it's a japanese technique called the shimbari system but it means um essentially you spread um uh the, the the pressure using these lovely fiberglass rods um to across the surface so you're, you're clamping the surface down as the adhesive is setting um, and first of all the surface would have been humidified to ensure that there was some mobility in the lacquer so um a big piece of work, um, a big screen, a lot of surface there. Um, and um, that work, I should say, was, was very generously funded by the Pilgrim Trust, the uh, conservation of the lacquer and Japan objects. Um, the condition process, uh, condition checking process also raised some puzzles. So we, we spoke earlier about beds, there were a few beds at Marble Hill. Um, one in particular, this is the Barrington bed, which is a loan from the V&A. Um, uh, actually turned out to be a very mysterious uh, synthesis of 18th century things um, probably never originally a bed um, uh, and we had um, the input of expert colleagues from the VNA uh, uh, and additional uh, input from uh, from external furniture conservators to work out quite how we would take it apart safely uh, and luckily we managed to to, to do that um, 
And then uh, the image on the right is one of the lovely long case clocks at Marble Hill. And um, uh, we, we work with a specialist or a logical conservator to again, to safely dismantle and create that. Um, uh, so that was a very interesting for me. I, I don't have a lot of experience working with clocks. So that was really interesting. Um, and then we actually, Took, took everything out. Um, so once we solved all the puzzles and done the treatments we needed to, um, we competitively tended the packing and the storage work. Um, and um, this is an image of, I think, the first day uh, of, of the decamp, which was back in um, November of last year. And so we, uh, we appointed specialist contractors to take all the lights uh, down and out for us. So this is the chandelier in the great room, which luckily had a winch. So we'd winched it down and then it was dismantled and carefully packed. Um, and it will be cleaned and fully electrically tested as well uh, when it's off site by the contractor. So everything will come back looking fabulous and it will all be safe and we can plug it into our new electrical installation. So that's really great news. Um, and then we worked with uh, another the specialist contractor to remove those architectural details the architectural painters I was talking about before uh, paintings rather I was talking about before um, so this is a kind of very innocuous image uh, before we began everything and, and it shows this is a, a sort of hydraulic stepper and the bottom half of one of those enormous architectural paintings they're all about two and a half by one and a half meters and um, the frames are completely separate from the canvases um, so quite a challenge really um, uh, but um, we got them down as you can see here so uh, they were just on these sort of strange hessian backings um, and um, that that image is uh, King Charles the first and Prince Charles um, uh, uh, and um, they are uh, 17th century copies we think after Van Dyck um, uh, fabulous things um, quite unwieldy um, to take out of the house um, and then there's the frame on the other side of the room um, so uh, the canvases came down the stairs absolutely fine far too big to crate upstairs so we had to crate them downstairs in a tetra style hall but the frames gave us a bit more of a headache um, because they were their plaster they were cast from originals we think from Wilton House um, but they had absolutely no strength to them um, so we devised a way um, of getting them down the stairs without uh, flexing and uh, uh, with uh, I think it's six six uh, uh, strong people carrying them down the stairs um, with another two people spotting them and then all of us looking concerned at the bottom of the stairs but it all went very well um, it took quite a long time um, so this is a uh, it's a very long day. Um, this is uh, the evening of that day, and you can see um, three of the frames, I think, on the right-hand side of the van, all packed and, and, and happy. And then actually, I think on the left-hand side, you can see one of those bespoke packing uh, cases. And I think actually that's the crate um, for the screen that um, I showed you earlier for Henrietta's uh, screen. So, that was brilliant. Uh, and then just a final image to show you the extent of what we did remove. Um, so uh, uh, yeah, not, not a massively flattering one. I won't, I won't name who, who those people are, um, but they, um, they were the specialist conservators who helped us remove the fixings. And we had to take out even the fire grates um, because uh, the electrical works uh, were required to the units behind the fire grates. So that was an uncomfortable challenge for, uh, for, 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 for those two conservators to uh, actually chisel out the fireplace um, it looked like they'd been cemented in probably in the mid 20th century so um that was a, a tough couple of days for, for for that particular crew um but again that came out and everything now is safely in commercial art storage so um the image on the left shows you uh, one of our rooms uh, in storage so very different to its original uh, 18th century uh, context um but in a way a, a lot easier to look after because there's a fully air conditioning system and with the press of a button you have um uh, well, uh, probably a bit more than a press of a button, but you have the, the conditions that you need. So we were always keen to maintain particular uh, conditions around humidity and around temperature. And we monitor that remotely, even while the condition is in storage. We, we have our own personal monitoring systems as well as the commercial um, storage units monitoring conditions. So we, we're, looking, we're looking at that all the time. We can raise any concerns and we also obviously visit the collection and, and check it's okay at least once a month at the moment. Um, 
So, um, at the moment, uh, as I said, we're at the, um, uh, the, the, the progress stage, so the construction works are, are, are well in progress, and, and so my role now is really to advocate for the protection of the collections and the interiors during the work, so I sit on the delivery team. Um, with the with the English Heritage Project Manager and the Properties Curator and also the external contractors. Um, so I visit site regularly to sign off on uh, the protections that we've specified and to make sure essentially that everybody's sort of behaving themselves on site in respect of the fabric of the building. Um, so this is some examples of the type of protection work that was being installed. So we, we had a fair amount of asbestos to remove in the building. Um, and obviously when you're removing asbestos, uh, the people that are removing it need to work in a fully sealed enclosure. It's quite hard, challenging to create a fully sealed enclosure when you can't attach any tapes to the walls or to the floors. Um, so what we had requested and, and what the contractors actually did very, very well was create a series of pressure fixed enclosures. So what you can see here it is screens being created and basically fixed with 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 um, uh, just with compressing materials. So this is actually a, an expanded um, polyethylene foam, uh, which is completely inert. Um, and then you've got the softwood, which is cushioned against the foam and then and then built into the architectural um, details, uh, really. So that worked really well. Um, you can see uh, one of the enclosures a little bit further progressed here. So on the left, you've got the enclosure and the protection around the fireplace, which I think is in the great room. And then on the right, you've got the protection being built around um, some columns in the um, uh, bed chamber. So that was, um, it, it, it was great to see that that worked. Uh, I'm delighted to say Marble Hill is now asbestos free as of last month. So that's really good news. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a long time coming. Um, and now we are moving on to actually what is more simple forms of protection for the works themselves. Um, and then the other side of the, uh, the, the, the current work streams that, that I'm involved in um, is, is beginning to work with colleagues to plan in, in great detail the new displays and the new interpretation schemes, the, the new redecoration schemes. So this is an image of some specialist contractors doing some paint sampling so we can look at what evidence there is left um, for the original decorative scheme that would have been there during Henrietta's time. So it's all really fascinating work and fascinating judgments about what we can, we can, we do know and what we don't know and, and how we how we bridge the gap really. So that's really really fascinating. Um, we're also um, we have found out relatively recently that we do need also to replace the entire heating system at Marble Hill, which for, for me is great news. It means we will have more control of the environment for the objects when they come back in. So we're now working through the details. The specification has, has been issued. We've now got a contractor on board so that the very fine details with, with colleagues in the conservation science team in particular um, uh, of, of, of what we do and how we, how we get those controls exactly as we want them. So that's absolutely brilliant. We're also continuing to think through how we protect the floors when visitors come in. And again, in particular, they're thinking about the staircase because um, uh, it's a fabulous staircase with lots of kind of quite vulnerable nosings that, that are re really, really well preserved. And again, we, we want to make sure that they are not affected by, um, uh, by, by the increased visitor numbers. We, we want everything to obviously be as well looked after as it can whilst showing it to people. Um, so it's all a really, really interesting uh, a phase at the moment and um, so it's those two tandem tandem streams of work um, but looking forward um, the when I visited the site last week we there were 17 separate contractors on on site so it's getting very busy the work is is really really getting going now the asbestos is, is out so that's brilliant um, the current program is that we will begin to reinstall the collection uh, and reinstall the new interpretative um, uh, structures in September of next year um, and then uh, that will mean we'll be able to reopen visitors, which we it reopen to visitors uh, and welcome people back into the house in spring of 2022. So there's a little while yet, unfortunately, but there's quite a lot to do in that period. Um, and, and also in that period, we're working through um, 
a, a big recruitment campaign uh, for room stewarding volunteers and volunteers to help us look after the collection. So please do keep an eye on the website for, for details of those roles um, as they are being um, being released. Um, so we, it's a, there's it's going to be a lot to do. and We'd be delighted to have people um, help us. Um, thank you so much, Rebecca. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Bye-bye.